Bam! Hey everybody, I'm John Harris and this is the Exponential Entrepreneur Academy coming to you live from our digital studios. Now let me ask you a question, what is the next step of the te exponential technologies? So a lot of people have got algorithms, they've got platforms they're creating. What is the next step? The next step is exponential enterprises, the organization. It's okay as an individual. Remember, we spoke clearly about the two parts. As an individual, your content, your information, your story, which is belongs to you, your, your own technology that can go with that, that you can launch something out to the world. But if you're going to scale that up, if you're going to have a growth company, and we, need, we spoke about all of these things, whether you're just generating some extra revenue, whether you want a lifestyle change, or whether you want a growth business. The second you start building up a proper enterprise, you're going to get into what we would call a, a proper organization, an enterprise. And for that, we have to have a slightly different structure in the new world. The old brick and mortar type businesses can have a lot of layers and a lot of jobs that are becoming obsolete with the power and the innovation of technology. So let's just think about some of these things. If you think of something and, and, and this in terms of concentric circles within each other, and really there are three main areas. Bearing in mind, we spoke about your massive transformative purpose, your NTP, whether you have your own vision, something that's very, very important to you. And people talk about something that you might die for. I would rather say, what are you really willing to live for when you're under dire constraints, when you're under death situation? What would keep you going? What would pull you through? That is your why. And as far as the organization goes, these concentric circles go with the connecting tissue of a massive transformative purpose which enables you to get certain things like staffing, funding, etc. Your inner circle is your core team. And your core team should be made up of, of not, not a large number of people, maybe three to five people. Uh, your visionary, for example, uh, perhaps your, your top technologist, and somebody who's a connector, somebody who's going to interact with the crowd, bearing in mind that you can get a minimum viable product done fairly quickly and put it out to the crowd who would then tell you perhaps this is not what they're looking for or these are some of the things they're looking for and most of these businesses that have platforms and have technology and organizations they morph into different something completely different than they originally started out as so that that inner circle is your core team and they're the ones that are going to drive that vision and obviously connect the rest of the the, the, the business together outside of that you're going to have a community and your community really is going to be something where you're going to look to get your customers involved, get users, get fans, get people. You're even going to start to get your vendors, your partners, and you're going to bring those people together as part of that community um, with your raving fans. So you, this is the second part of that in concentric circles. And then on the outside, you're going to have the rest. Basically, it goes to... The, the crowd that's out there um, and you're not going to please everybody you're not going to try and attract everybody obviously we know we've spoken about marketing when we talk about information products that on, 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 on our information product side as an individual we've spoken about having the possibility of your market your marketing and your message and so forth here we're looking to actually go scale this whole thing up to a to a business that is large scale and the power of these exponentials is unbelievable where it could take companies 30, 40 years to get a billion dollar market cap, these companies are doing it in two and a half years. We know of some of the giants out there, the, the, the Googles, the Airbnbs, etc. So it, the power is there and people with a vision can now go and get a team together you, and then build out a very, very powerful platform that can solve some of the world's major problems. Whether it's in the health industry, uh, whether it's in new renewable energies, whatever it may be and there is another thing that these companies have that's why the old companies the old organizations cannot compete these new organizations can get staff on demand they can get uh, office space on demand co-working space so they don't have to pay for things that are rigid that are unflexible buying a building is is a big investment and to expand it is very costly Today, these companies are using global presence, they're having work, co-working spaces, they get staff on demand to come in and come out per project, 
There's much more flexibility. They're much flatter. We know the story of Kodak that had, I think it was 130,000 st uh, staffing and, and, and the crash. And, and something like Instagram that took over and sold to Facebook for a billion with like 13 staff. So the power of not having all that staff, uh, the cost reduction is unmatched, unparalleled. And we're driving constantly in business because business is growing. But the way they do that obviously is effectiveness and efficiencies that they can build into to stay relevant. And this is what the power of these digital organizations is. So I just wanted to clearly put across to you to understand on exponentials, you're trying to double your outputs. You're trying to grow something where you, at a very, very fast rate. And what it is, it has huge power as opposed to all the organizations that were much slower moving, the dinosaurs. With these new organizations, the sands of time are shifting under the feet of these organizations. We know that AI is going to impact everything. And those that aren't onto it, aren't using it, are not going to be able to compete. So whether you're for it or against it, the thing about it is that it's going to affect you. Your decision should be, am I going to get involved as an individual with my own proprietary information, uh, my story, my ideas, my message, or we're going to build a big organization where we have software platforms, we have maybe AI algorithms, and we start to build something out on a much bigger scale to solve much bigger problems. The choice is yours. But today is the day that it's abundant, it's available. You can start doing these things. People are doing them around the world. Okay, AI... Um, Ray Kurzweil talks about hitting the singularity by 2030. Right? Everyone said no, much more, much further beyond that. Some said never. Well, Elon Musk's Neuralink, um, Google's, the huge power that they're putting into to Tensor and into the, uh, the AI algorithms. The quantum computing says different. IBM's, I believe, just brought out a, 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 a bridge between um, normal the quantum computing and a normal computer. So those quantum chips are coming out. The computing power of Moore's Law is escalating at, a tr at the correct rate to Moore's Law. And so forth, we may well have the singularity sooner than most people believe. A at that point, there's going to be an issue as far as how relevant people are going to be when it comes to work. They talk about the future of work. The way I see it is going to have a much bigger impact than we think. They say there's always other jobs that come up. Up to now, tools that we have had from Stone Age have enabled us to do a job better. They've helped us. The tools we are building now in AI are going to do the work for us. There's a very big difference here. And one of the biggest issues is what's the relevance, how are we going to use our time in the future? Uh, and how soon is that future? Uh, we are changing. If you keep an eye out, you'll see that things are changing on an hourly basis now. That's how fast the near the curve is on this exponential. So we need to be thinking about this, we need to be cognizant of it, but the opportunities are there as well. Um, we are in a more abundant world than we've ever been in, and although there's a lot of problems, a lot more people have been brought out of poverty, a lot more people are getting involved in, in economies. So the uh, positives that are spinning on this, health, big advances in health, in genomics, in, in, in medicines. Um, there's huge advances in education and the accessibility to education, to clean water. We now addressing, obviously, we have to address climate change things. Technology and a change of behavioral change is what's going to matter. And that is the way we're going to address those problems. So there's a huge advantage and we need to be cognizant of it. And we need to keep in our mind that we can develop these, these ideas, this creativity, these technologies. And we can also then build it out as, as, as an individual where technologies are driving towards anyway, but we also can have an organization uh, where we have a minimum number of people that are in that organization that are very, very powerful. So the future is here and it's exciting and I think it needs to be embraced in order to, 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 to feel safe. Um, I think it was Peter Mendes that said, look, the best way to, to, to have a future, to control your future is to create it yourself. So I hope you've got a few ideas here, and I hope that you'll start to think about things that are much bigger than you thought possible in, in, in the past, things that you thought you'd never even, it was a complete daydream, that you might think, well, this actually may be possible, and it may be worth looking into and starting something. We'll see you in the next episode.